Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship here on at Epiphany United Church of Christ on the 22nd Sunday after Pentecost. And actually, I just want to point out that it is actually Kathy Engrid's birthday tomorrow. Another thing to celebrate, so you might want to pass on your greetings to her a little after the service. Friends, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here at Epiphany. Welcome, of course, to our first-time guests. Welcome to those who have no church home, those who need strength, those who have doubt, those who want to follow after the way of the Christ, and even those who do not believe. Welcome to those who are baptized here and have worship in this place for generations. Welcome to people of all sexual orientations and gender identities, and to people of all racial and ethnic heritages, and to families of every shape and size. Know this, you are not just tolerated, you are welcomed and celebrated as God's gift to all the world in this place. Amen. A couple of quick things to talk about. I want to uh, point out that we are waiting on CDC guidelines so that we can hurry up and hopefully open up our godly playroom for our children. I just want to make sure that you know we are looking at those guidelines and making sure that we can do Sunday school safely uh, with the current COVID pandemic as well. A couple of other quick things I want to point out, too, is that this is the first time in 19 months that we at least have four-part harmony in this sanctuary. It's not the full choir, but at least we have some of our wonderful musicians celebrating song with us and a very special piece uh, coming up as our offering music as well. So that is something to celebrate during this time. I want to point out that Neighbors in Need offering is this day. You can give online if you wish. You can also uh, just put something in the envelope. There are a couple of, there are probably multiple envelopes in front of you. We don't have a special Neighbors in Need envelope, but if you want to do two separate ones and just indicate which one goes to Neighbors in Need and which one actually goes to support the ministries of this place and its people. We also want to give you official notice. Our meeting for our annual meeting will be on Sunday, November 21st. And we will be electing new council members. So if you are interested in serving this congregation in that way, we certainly need your help and your guidance as we transition, obviously, over the next two years. Uh, We would welcome that. If you're interested, make sure and contact Liz right over here as she waves. She would love to talk to you about that as well. So on November 6th, I think many of you know that we are actually going to be... um, gathering for our 125th anniversary dinner. Good news is we've got 81 folks already signed up, 11 kids, 70 adults, and I'm sure there will be a lot more, so it's going to be a very festive, uh, a very wonderful evening uh, that evening. So it's free, so feel free to actually go ahead and sign up and uh, be a part of that as well. It's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, friends, let us now continue our worship and song. Rise as you're able and join us in the blue hymnal. It is actually Mage 339 Blue Hymnal, one of my favorite favorites, Be Thou My Vision.
If anybody asks you who I am, who I am, who I am, who I am. if anybody asks you who I am, who I am tell them I'm a child of God. When the people of God entered the promised land, they carried the ark with them. They took it into the mountains to a place called Shiloh and they put God's tent around it. And that's where the ark stayed. Now the people, they settled in the hills around the ark. Hannah and Elkanah lived in Ramah was not too far. And each year they would travel to Shiloh to pray and be near the ark. Hannah wanted to be a mother, but she had no children. One day, when she went to Shiloh to pray, She prayed so hard in front of God's tent that one of the priests, Eli, was worried about her. He came to see if there was anything he could do to help, and she told him she was praying for God to give her a child. And Eli helped her pray. Hannah and Elkanah had a baby, and they named him Samuel, which means someone given by God. Hmm. Samuel grew with what they did. When he was old enough, they took him back was also sleeping on his mat. He heard a voice calling his name. Samuel! Samuel! He thought it must be Eli asking for him. And so he went to him, but Eli said, it wasn't me. Go lie back down. It happened again. But on the third time, Eli realized that God was calling Samuel and told him to go lie back down on his mat. And if he heard the voice again, to say, Speak, God, your servant listens. Samuel did what Eli said. And when he heard the voice again, God spoke to him and told him that Eli's son and the people of God were going to lose the ark in battle and that when Eli hears the news, he will die. Samuel told Eli what God had told him and later It came true. The ark was gone. And Eli died. So Samuel went back to Ramah to live with his parents. He was a great leader to all the people. He was also a true prophet.
when he was and said, we want We want to be like other nations. Samuel wasn't sure what to do. So he prayed to God, and God told him to find a king. So he did. When he found Saul, he knew this was the right person. He anointed Saul by pouring oil over his head and giving thanks to God. Saul led the armies of Israel, and he was their king. But the Spirit of the Lord left Saul, and God told Samuel, to find a new king. And so Samuel went to Bethlehem. He went to the house of Jesse. There he found Jesse's youngest son, David. And he anointed David with oil and gave thanks to God David would be the new king after Saul died. When all his work was done, Samuel came back to Ramah. And when he died, the people came from all over. And they cried tears of sadness and thanksgiving. I wonder, I wonder what part of this story you like the best. I wonder where you are in this story. Yearning for a child, listening for God's voice, leading the army of Israel. Wonder what part might be about you. I wonder what part is most important to you today. As we continue to wonder about this story of God, let us pass the peace of Christ with silent or spoken gesture to one another. The Lord be with you. Let us pass the peace of Christ. Our scripture this morning is from 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Now the boy Samuel was serving the Lord under Eli. The Lord's word was rare at that time, and visions weren't widely known. One day Eli, whose eyes had grown so weak he was unable to see, was lying down in his room. God's lamp hadn't gone out yet. And Samuel was lying down in the Lord's temple, where God's chest was. The Lord called to Samuel. I'm here, he said. Samuel hurried to Eli and said, I'm here, you called me? I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go lie down. So he did. Again, the Lord called Samuel. 
So Samuel got up, went to Eli, and said, I'm here. You called me? I didn't call my son, Eli replied. Go lie down. Now, Samuel didn't yet know the Lord, and the Lord's word hadn't yet been revealed to him. The third time the Lord called Samuel, he got up, went to Eli, and said, I'm here. You called me? Then Eli realized that it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So Eli said to Samuel, go and lie down. If the Lord calls you, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down where he'd been. Then the Lord came and stood there, calling just as before. Samuel, Samuel, Samuel said, Speak, your servant is listening. Still speaking, God, help us to hear your grace, goodness, justice, and mercy in the words we are about to hear in this moment. Glory to the Creator. Friends, before we begin the sermon, I want to make sure and introduce you to, of course, Elizabeth Jones. I think most of you are familiar with Elizabeth. She is the pastor at St. Luke's Community Church in Morton Grove, but she's also a member here at Epiphany. She is going through her member and discernment process with the Chicago Metropolitan Association, and this is her chance to also, uh, it's kind of an odd mix because, of course, she serves in other congregations, so we don't get to see her a lot, but she shows up when she can, and we're thankful to have a word from her this morning as well. I invite you to pray for her as she goes through that member and discernment process. And I welcome, of course, uh, Pastor Elizabeth back into this pulpit this morning. Come on up. Well, thank you to Pastor Kevin. And it is good to be back here at Epiphany. Um, it uh, is uh, a natural thing for me to get up and preach because I do it every Sunday. But this is a, a different place. And so I pray that what the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts will truly be a blessing to us all. So, uh, thank you to Pastor Megan for reading the scripture passage, which is before us today. Uh, she uh, did a wonderful job narr giving a narration of, of the life of Samuel. I'm going to take just a snip of that narration and we are going to look at the first part of chapter 3 verses 1 through 10. Are you a good listener? Listening well is a real challenge. Many people are not particularly attentive listeners. They might get distracted or they are preoccupied, or any one of a dozen other reasons. It is difficult sometimes to listen, especially when we are straining to listen to a crackly voice, like on an old-fashioned radio, or over a cell phone's poor connection if we consider our scripture reading this morning. We're told something right up front. The Lord's word was rare at that time. 
and visions were not widely known. In that time, people could not simply check out their Bibles or look up a reading on their cell phone or laptop. The word of the Lord was mostly verbal as Pastor Megan delivered the word this morning, chiefly an oral tradition passed down, passed around by priests and temple workers. There were not a written set of scriptures except probably a collection of the laws of Moses, an early account of the patriarchs, and possibly early history of the children of Abraham. And this was all kept in the tabernacle, in God's special tent. In Shiloh, where God was pleased to dwell. All of these factors are a challenge when it comes to listening to God. Either in the time of this scripture, that the scripture was written, or today too. The Lord's word was rare at this time. So when God did speak to a person, that must have been a huge event. The Hebrew word for rare also means precious. That would go for both the voice of God as much as for the visions of God and the visions from God, as precious as precious metals or precious stones. Even Samuel's upright mother, Hannah, was not one of these favored people to hear the voice of God. What we know from 1 Samuel 1, what was recorded, was that she was a barren woman. For years and years, she could not conceive a child. Eli the priest finally saw Hannah in her need, there at Shiloh, praying in great distress. And he promised she would receive what she prayed for so earnestly, a child. Hannah was so thankful. After the child was born, she returned that precious gift of a son. She gave Samuel to the Lord when he was very young to serve in God's tabernacle from that time forward. And this brings us up to the point where we re-enter the narrative. What does this reading tell us about Samuel? And I'm quoting, Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A few years had gone by since his mother Hannah entrusted him to the care of the priest Eli. So Samuel works in the special tent where God's special presence is located, where God is pleased to dwell, where the intricate ark of the covenant is stored. Do we begin to have some idea of how valuable, how rare it was for anyone to hear from God, the Lord Almighty who made heaven and earth? And just reflecting on this, If you and I are left to total silence from God, that must be a very sad and lonely time for us indeed. Is it difficult to listen to God? 
I know we have a lot of competing sounds and voices in our world today. Just think about the insistent voices of business or school, assignments, responsibility that call to us. Remind us we have more work to do. Something important to handle, an urgent message, or an impatient person to get back to. What about the seductive sounds of social media? All kinds of eye-popping entertainment. You and I can be entertained 24-7, 365 days a year if we so desire. Talk about drowning out the voices of our friends and our family, much less the voice of God. I know Samuel was still a boy. Children have serious concerns, other important stuff going on too. But let us take a closer look at this passage. Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back. Lie down. So Samuel went and laid down. I do need to go back in our reading and emphasize one point in particular. In verse 2, we are told the priest Eli had lost his eyesight. With failing vision, he cannot see God as clearly as he might have during the height of his ministry. Although Eli could not see it, God had already called his student Samuel to lead Israel, even at such a young age. The Lord was already calling to Samuel. But at this point, Eli and Samuel are both missing that call or misunderstanding that voice. How often do you and I miss an important voice? Mishear or misunderstand? Sometimes our attention is not the best. I know I can get distracted and not hear or miss hear. I'm sure you're aware of that tendency as well. I suspect it's happened to you. Perhaps you were worried or frustrated or distracted. Or what about your kids or grandkids? How many times do I have to tell you? In one ear and out the other. Could you stop, pay attention, and listen to me for crying out loud? The priest Eli may have been losing his eyesight, but he had not lost touch with his position. He was the priest of the Lord, serving the Lord God Almighty. He had the internal insight to tell that the Lord was calling to Samuel. Our commentator Herbert Marbury tells us, thankfully it took Eli only three attempts to recognize God's voice. The omniscient narrator heightens the reader's frustration by cluing the reader in 
to the identity of the voice before Eli identifies its source. Finally, Eli realizes the gift that God had given to Samuel. And it is indeed a gift that God gives to Samuel. God calls to Samuel, and Samuel responds. He answers as Eli prompts him, Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. I know it is not the easiest thing to focus closely and to listen to God with full attention. Especially when God's voice is half drowned out by the cacophony of competing voices, sounds, buzzes, and beeps of modern technology. Not to mention the internal worries, concerns, anxieties, especially of this continuing pandemic, this COVID time. Worries not only for us, but for our loved ones, too. Sometimes it is good to slow down, to rest, to make oneself quiet within and without, as Samuel did. And then you and I may be more likely to hear God speak. This, this still speaking God persisted in the darkness of Samuel's room until Samuel recognized God's voice. Just as Samuel finally recognized God's voice, God also persists until we listen too. Amen. Speak, Lord. When we quiet, slow down, and become available to God, we can see ourselves in the image of the Creator, not in the images developed by market-driven mass media. On that day, when each one has what she or he needs to respond, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Then the blessings of the Lord will truly be revealed among us. Alleluia. Amen. Thank you. Will you join with me in a prayer of confession? O oh God of love and justice, we long for peace within and peace without, for harmony in our families, for serenity in the midst of struggle, and for commitment to each other's growth. We long for the day when our homes will be a dwelling place for your love, yet we confess that we are often anxious. We do not trust each other. We harbor violence. We do not listen. We confess the ways in which we have been unwilling to take the risks and make the hard choices that love requires. O oh God, look upon us with kindness and grace. Open our ears and our hearts to hear you call, to 
to hear your word, your call, your vision above all others. O oh God, show us how to walk in your paths to the mercy of our Savior. Amen. Friends, what has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. God is grace and mercy and gives such goodness to us each day. Thanks be to God. Here, four part harmony. Thank you so much for that gift of song this morning. And thank you for all the ways that you've continued to support this congregation during these 19 months. Uh, just know that in the back there are some offering plates if you wish to give to the work of this place and also to neighbors in need this Sunday as well. So, friends, I was just thinking about Pastor Elizabeth's words this morning. When they were making that famous sort of Pixar, I guess it was DreamWorks film called. Um, uh, Prince of Egypt, animated film, and oftentimes during the confirmation class we'll use that sort of call moment. There's a beautiful moment in the film where Moses is called by God. And the, the filmmakers had this dilemma about what to do with what does God sound like? 
And in the end, they tried a couple of scenarios. And in the end, they decided actually to use the actor's voice who was Moses, slightly modulated, coming back at him. It really struck me this morning that, that Eli sort of mistook God's voice, or I should say Samuel mistook Eli's voice for God's voice over and over again. So often God speaks to our prayers and answers our prayers, obviously, through other human beings. So I invite you as we go to God in prayer and ask of God that in the coming days you listen for God speaking through other human beings. I invite you also to say, Lord, in your mercy, uh, and when I say that, you respond with hear our prayers. Gracious and living God, we thank you for all the ways indeed that you do speak to us, that you do your work of healing and hope and goodness in this world. You are relentless with what you have created. You have not let go of us and this world. And for that, we will give you praise and honor until our dying breaths and then beyond. Holy One, we pray for those who are in physical and spiritual and uh, emotional need of your help and healing. We pray for Barb and for Larry and for Joan Buck and for Simon and Maria Jilly and her brother and for Mary Dalby. For Penny sisters, Clarice and Joanne, and for our beloved Jenny Maddox. For Carol, who finds herself back in the hospital this Friday night. For Erica Lost brother, Rick. For Sue's sister, Corey. For Jerry's friend, Angela. For Tim O'Connor. For Carl, for Brandy, for Kathy, for Rita and Maria. May you do your work of healing and hope with them. And also with us and those that we care about that have been left unmentioned in this moment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for those who grieve the loss of friends that have gone into your family of love and care. We pray for Sue, Sue's family, for Karen Oliver's family, for Shirley's family, and for all those who have lost loved one to COVID-19. And families, of course, who are constantly losing loved ones to violence and war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for this world that you have created, so fraught and destroyed oftentimes by human greed and human wrath and human revenge. Holy One, we ask that you continue to be with those who are persecuted for their faith, of whatever faith they may be. We thank you for your faithfulness to us in this world. We ask that you be with those who are suffering violence here in Chicago and elsewhere, including the Middle East. And we pray for those living with COVID-19, and those in hospitals and other settings who take care of them. And we pray for racial justice all across this land, uh, justice that always begins in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the church universal, for all Christian churches of whatever stripe and creed, we know that they remain yours. And we pray for our own little, little part of your realm, Epiphany. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Gracious God, you are faithful to us. And when we cannot speak, you give us the words to speak. And so we say them with your Savior, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of God forever. Amen. Friends, rise as you're able and join us in the black hymnal number 495, called as Partners in Christ's Service.
invite all of you to join us in fellowship. There are some snacks and chairs out in, outside in front of the church and in the courtyard. And for those of you that are watching on YouTube, we look forward to that great day when you will join us in fellowship in person again. Listen. Do you hear it? Something is happening. Pay attention. You could walk right through a miracle and miss it. But not you. Go from this place and spread the word of the ever-loving God. Amen.